Alexa, lights on. Okay. Hey guys, let me know if you enjoyed that cinematic intro introducing this week's project, which, if you didn't get the memo, is an Arduino-controlled fingerprint computer on button slash password manager. So, let's get to it right after this. Malduino is an open source Arduino based bad USB. You can use it to inject keystrokes at lightning speed, gain a shell, change someone's desktop wallpaper, anything you can do with a keyboard and 15 minutes of your time, Malduino can do in a matter of seconds. To find out more, see the Indiegogo link in the description. So in regards to its features, assuming the computer is off, you can simply use any finger you've already got registered on this thing and it'll turn the computer on. When the computer is on, you can use passwords assigned to different fingerprints. So this finger could be eBay, the other one could be Amazon, that could be Reddit and so on. When you need to use a certain password, just put your finger on the reader and it'll type it in. So this project uses a fingerprint sensor, an Arduino Pro Micro, an MPN transistor, a 3.3 volt regulator, a 10k ohm resistor, and a bunch of jump wires to connect everything together. I'll put links to where you can get all of this down in the description. So how does this all work? Well, the Arduino taps into your computer's power button circuitry, allowing it to control when the button is pressed rather than you physically. Also, it knows when the computer is on via the power button's LED. If the LED is on, then the computer is on. This allows the Arduino to toggle between power button mode and password manager mode. The Arduino also gets power and injects keystrokes using a USB cable. The fingerprint scanner's data sheet was wrong, so I had to figure out what each line was for. If you want to do this yourself and you're using a Pro Micro, you need to connect it as follows. The data sheet also said it runs at 5 volts, however, I tried that and it became very, very hot, so I'm running it at 3.3 volts and it works absolutely fine. So firstly, you're going to need to download the Adafruit's fingerprint sensor library. Download, extract, then put it into your Arduino libraries folder. Then in your Arduino IDE, go to File, Example, Adafruit Fingerprint Sensor Library and Enroll. This script is going to allow you to register your fingerprints on the device itself. You can store up to 162 fingers, which is more than enough seeing as I only have 10. Since we're using a Pro Micro, we're going to want to go ahead and change the software serial pins to 8 and 9 instead of 2 and 3. So connect your Pro Micro, make sure your settings are correct and hit upload. Once uploaded, open the serial monitor, make sure you have carriage return selected down here, and 9600 as the board rate. So fingerprints are stored with an integer as an identifier, so I'm going to put one here. Make sure the sensor is clean, then put your thumb down on the sensor. And then you're going to need to do it again to confirm. And I did this for my whole hand. You can test to make sure it's worked if you go to File, Examples, Adafruit Fingerprint Sensor, then go to Fingerprint upload that sketch, and then place one of the fingers you've registered, and if it's done correctly, it should tell you. So let's have a look at how we actually interface with the computer itself. This is my computer's motherboard, and if you look in the bottom right, you'll notice two rows of pins. These are called headers. Pretty much every motherboard has them, and they're used to interface with various things on the case. So grab your motherboard's manual or search it up online and you can find out what, what each of these pins are for. So you can see here we've got the power LED, we've got the reset pins, the power switch. How those work is when they're shorter together, the computer turns on. So these pins are what we're going to be using to control the computer essentially. Okay, my dude, so I couldn't find a fancy piece of software that would allow me to sketch out this design. That included a Pro Micro, hence why you're going to have to put up with this, I'm afraid. So we've got a voltage regulator here, 3.3 uh, volt voltage regulator, of course. So voltage in, of course, we've got VCC going here, that's 5 volts in. Out, our 3.3 volts is going directly to our fingerprint sensor, and ground from the fingerprint sensor is connected here. And you can't really see it, but this is connected to ground over here. So pins eight and nine on the Pro Micro, we know those are for the data lines on the fingerprint sensor. And then the power button. So the power button works using this transistor. The whole point of a transistor is when you apply power to the middle pin, it will essentially complete the circuits and current will be allowed to flow from this pin to this pin. So that's how we've got it set up. So when we apply power to pin four on the Pro Micro, it'll go along here. 
and essentially complete the circuit between these two, which um, these two, if you haven't guessed already, are the positive and negative of the power button on the motherboard. So that's how that works. And I wanted to um, preserve the functionality of my power button's LED. So um, this five uh, digital pin five, I've got the positive line of the motherboard's uh, power button LED going here with a 10K pull down resistor. And pin six is the positive output going directly to the case's power button, um, power button LED, LED that is. The negatives of the case LED and the motherboard LED are shorted together. Okay, so the act of preserving the uh, power button LED is actually quite important and it's something I'll explain in just a second when we get over to the code. Okay, so now we're in the code, let's have a look at how this is all put together. So this whole sketch here is essentially just a modification of the fingerprint example sketch from earlier. So at the beginning here, I'm defining a few pins this power LED, that's the output going to the case's LED. So when we set this to one, uh, this turns the case LED on. Uh, power button four, this pin goes to the middle of that transistor we saw earlier. So when we set this to one, it triggers the power button turning the computer on. And power status, okay. So this pin is essentially the um, motherboard's power LED output, though we're using it, we're using it as an input and we're using it to um, be able to tell the state of the computer, whether it's on or off. So the reason we want to be able to determine that is that we want to be able to switch between turning the computer on mode and password manager mode, because obviously we don't want to trigger the um, power button by accident when all we want to do is put in our Amazon password or something like that. So when the computer is on, obviously the um, computer is gonna turn on the power LED. So that's how we know whether it's on or off. Uh, it's pretty simple, really. Okay, so of course we set my serial to eight and nine. And now let's have a look at this. So we're just um, setting those pins as, uh, as outputs and inputs respectively. And then we're beginning the keyboard, allowing us to inject keystrokes. And if we scroll down a little, this is all uh, the same. And the loop, okay, so this loop essentially just keeps on executing over and over again infinitely. And in the beginning of the loop, it'll get the ID of the uh, fingerprint sensor. So how this works is that if we've got a finger, if we haven't got a finger on the fingerprint sensor, this will just return minus one. So ID will be minus one. However, if we have got a finger on the fingerprint sensor, it will return whatever the ID of that fingerprint is. So um, assuming we've got our finger on there, uh, if we scroll down, let's have a look what happens. So if digital reads power status equals. Okay, so this will execute um, regardless of whether, what, regardless of what state this is. So if power status equals one, that means if the uh, computer is saying, turn on the power LED, then we're going to turn on the power LED. Else, if the computer isn't saying turn on the power LED, then we're gonna keep the power LED off. So this, we're using this um, little bit of code because in our case, the computer isn't directly um, connecting to the power LED. We're kind of acting as an interface between it. Okay, so this is the more important bit. If ID is greater than minus one, as in if we've got a valid finger on the fingerprint sensor, and if the computer is off, then we're going to turn the computer on. So we're essentially turning the power button on for 250 milliseconds, and then we're turning the power button off. So this is self-explanatory, finger on, um, it'll trigger the power button, turning the computer on. And notice how we've got that to uh, if ID is greater than minus one. So pretty much any finger will turn the computer on, though you could change that and make it uh, to um, a certain finger if you'd prefer. Okay, so now we've got else. So if the computer is already on, if the computer is already on, instead of triggering triggering the power button, instead we're going to um, check what finger is actually on the fingerprint sensor. So this is a switch, a switch statement. It allows us to um, set different outcomes for different cases of what the ID might be. So in the case that ID is one, I've set this is my thumb. I've set that to the uh, to Amazon. So this is my Amazon password. Well, it's not really, but you get the idea. 
case two. So this is actually my index finger and I've set this to my computer password. So when I get to the login screen on uh, my computer, uh, it presses enter, it stops pressing enter, it waits a second, then it puts in my computer's password, it waits a fraction of a second and it presses enter again. So this allows me to um, log into my computer essentially uh, without um, typing anything. Uh, if I've got my middle finger on there, it'll put in my YouTube password, then I've got Google passwords, so essentially these are the YouTube and Google use the same or whatever. And then I've got my Reddit password. Uh, so yes, you could set this up for both hands, a maximum of 10 passwords. Hell, you could even put one of these on the floor and then set one up for each of your toes. Though I think that would be really cool. So of course I'll put all the code I've used here in the description. So let's talk for a second about the negatives of this thing. Should you trust it to keep all your passwords on your computer safe? Well, yes and no. I doubt um, anyone in my household even knows what an Arduino is, let alone has the ability to reverse engineer this whole thing, download the binary from the Arduino, finding out my passwords and um, uh, screwing me over like that. However, if you um, know people that are more technologically inclined, then this might not be the best of ideas. Just something to keep in mind. Anyhow, uh, links to all the things you'd need to make this project yourself are down in the description. Uh, remember to comment if you have any questions, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter, I'm at Satonic, and stay tuned for more hacking videos.